Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, well, we have Chris Kane in Wandu who joins us on After Press. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Uh, happy belated holiday. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you had a nice break too. I well, we you know we never go on break. Kofi <laughs> 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 is, is a bit under the weather. Well, um, let's start off with the nation now. The nation newspaper, uh, we have other papers, uh, the Punch and also the leadership newspaper and the Daily Trust. But the nation uh, is what we'll start off with this morning. On the nation newspaper, uh, the caption here talks about PDP is a party of Temites. Can't return to power, says Tunubu. PDP is a party of Temites and can't return to power, says Tunubu. Uh, that's uh, boldly written on the nation. APC accuses Dogara of using religion to cause disaffection. Buhari to confer infrastructure award on week a, October the 21st. <laughs> that sounds really interesting. And fire raises Kogi House of Assembly Complex. It was uh, the crux of our conversation on our top trending this morning. INEC, political parties can substitute candidates again. And just before we move away from the nation newspaper, WK allies absent as a Tiku campaign kicks off, and that happened yesterday in the Nest of Stadium in a Quibom state. Asu strike to end days, or end days, says Bajabia Miller and Falanor. Uh, let's see how that pans out, you know, for a student. Buhari lists winning strategies at Tunubu and Shatima women uh, team inauguration. That's what you find. Navy destroy oil bunkering vessel arrested by Tompolo's men. And would that be, you know, a very rational thing to do, especially when we have that some persons are involved in illegal activities? Wouldn't that just mean uh, evidence has been destroyed? Really, but I can't wait to share the thoughts of Chris Kane and Wando on this issue. Uh, away from the Nation newspaper, the punch is in front of us. And on the punch, a Tiku campaign, PDP governors hit Uyo with 15 private jets. Wike or Tom Mackinday, two others absent as party begins 2023 electioneering. Obasaki holds a South South stakeholders meeting in Uyo. Diri Udom pledge support. IU appeals to aggrieved governors, says party needs everyone to rescue Nigeria. And uh, Amoshun backs ADC candidate. APC says ex-governor is treacherous. And just before we move away from the punch, Boats accident claims 701 lives in 34 months. It's quite saddening. Work for Tinubu's victory, Buhari tells APC women. I mean, so you have like an, uh, a campaign that's been inaugurated just for women, understanding the power that women have over time, especially in the elections, if you look at the statistics. Assembly fire, government alleges sabotage, Dangote threatens lawsuit. And that's it this morning on uh, the Punch newspaper. And in front of us, we have the leadership. The leadership says 2023 campaigns, INEC threatens sanctions as states clamp down on opposition parties. Big uh, caption here for the leadership. Destroy candidates' billboards. Posters impose huge fee on venues. <laughs> Relocate party secretaries from strategic locations. Governor's action poses threat to peaceful polls. CSOs and IPAC uh, quoted to say, President Mohammed Buhari and governors must protect rights of parties to hold rallies, says Serap. The writers you find underneath, WK Bags Award for Infrastructure Delivery. And uh, Lawan Okonjo-Ewele 
Amina, 444 others. Nash gets national honors today. Nigeria has potential to become world leader in digital economy. The vice president is very positive on his thoughts. And another uh, interesting headline on the leadership. Flooding, IMF seeks social assistance for farmers to curb food insecurity. Uh, the headlines that you find very interesting this morning on the leadership. And just before we move away, strike at last their solution in sight as it declares. Sounds like, you know, some scriptural statement. At campaign flag off, Atiku says he will end insecurity and hunger. The question will be how? I mean, this would not be the first time that Nigerians have heard of, you know, we will end insecurity, we will end X, Y, Z, and what have you. But, you know, it doesn't look like we're getting there. The Daily Trust, we'll look at the Daily Trust and then have Chris Kende, Wando, share his thoughts this morning. Race to presidency, Atuku unveils agenda and pledges jobs, poverty eradication and orders. Uh, the question would always be and should be how. Join the rescue winning team. Okoa, Tambuwal, IU, others, urges voters. We K four other governors absent and PDP crisis will soon be over. Diri is very positive. Asu promises to end strike after meeting reps and NAF's airstrike kills or kill terrorists. Kingpin Ali Dogo. 30 others in Kaduna. Presidency words in Kogi government and Dangote stand off. Uh, Lokoja flood, petrol scarcity spreads to state as gas price spikes. I mean, it, it's a lot of prayers that, you know, and uh, I think that everyone should pay attention to Lokoja at this point. The issue of flooding, fire with the national, some parts of the, uh, you know, assembly quarters. No alternative to APC victory. Uh, that's what Buhari is quoted to say. That's the president. And you have another caption. Federal government to honor Maman Daura or Kondra Iwela. 445 orders today. Uh, these are the headlines you find this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. Well, Chris, it's good to have you join us once again. And we always appreciate your time and thoughts. Chris Kende, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, so let, let's sort of that. I'd like to leave it very open to you. Which of the headlines interest you as we went through the pages of the National Dailies? Okay. I think um, we should start with politics and um, the flag off of uh, the PDP presidential um, campaign yesterday. In a year. Uh, it was a very good start for the PDP. Despite the fact that um, some of those um, gladiators within the PDP, the weak led uh, group, we have said that that did not remove um, anything from the flag of um, so many of the PDP governors were there. Uh, there are four, about four governors um, from South South, and three of them were there, and, and other governors from other parts of the country. So. It was a, a good start off, and um, you could see the crowd. For me, the PDP is doing the right thing. They don't have to wait to get uh, uh, to settle the whatever differences they have within their party before uh, going ahead or they'll be left behind. And from what they did yesterday, they've set the pace for other political parties to follow. Uh, you can uh, you remember that the, the ruling party, the APC, is still finding it difficult to reconstitute his own uh, presidential campaign, and which was why the list uh, was, they withdrew the list. Um, other parties like um, the Labour Party also have not flagged off their campaign with the NMPP and others. But for me, uh, it's a good start. Now we can start um, talking about issues and what the political parties can do. And we do, or we do differently from uh, what is happening now. And um, the PDP presidential candidate threw out a lot of promises and his agenda yesterday. It is now for us to start um, 
evaluating some of those um, campaign promises and ask them how they'll be able to deliver on it. So for me, it's a good, it was a good one. And um, the campaign is there. We cannot wait to see uh, what the politicians will tell us differently from what they've told us um, since 1999. And it is not left for Nigerians to make their choice as to who they think to be able to represent them uh, in 2023 and who we think we can hire for the job and who we think that is competent for the job. Well, um, then, yeah. So I also look at the the issue of the vessel that was destroyed by the Navy. Um, it, it begs to question a lot of things. Um, uh, Tompolo led a um, uh, group, a uh, vigilante group, uh, that was um, contracted recently by the federal government to marshal out and um, look after the pipelines and also to discover uh, where the leakages are coming from the Niger debt. Uh, we are losing close to about 400,000 barrels of um, crude oil on a daily basis. And from what we had, um, or what we read, in the last count, they've discovered about 55 um, oil, illegal oil pipelines that were being used to steal this, um, this crude oil. And um, recently, a few days ago, they intercepted a large oil vessel, which they seized, and the crew were arrested on the high sea. It is very, very <laughs> disheartening for us to hear this morning that the Navy are quickly uh, destroyed and set the, the vessel on, on fire. That brings to question the integrity of the military and their involvement in the so-called oil bunking that is going on. Why are you setting a vessel on fire that was arrested if you don't have any ulterior motive behind it? Investigation is going on. And part is what is what we're going to use for uh, as evidence in the course of pro uh, prosecution. Why would they? I think the president should come out as quickly as possible and get all those behind this arrested, either in the military or anywhere, get them arrested. And they must be prosecuted because I don't know who gave the order for the destruction. Or did they come from the presidency? Of the high or the high level of the military, and uh, for what reason? I think that is uh, something that should be looked into. Okay, so uh, I mean, let me take you back to uh, the punch again and the issue of politics where you started from. So we know that the uh, invitation was actually handed out to a lot of stakeholders in different categories: former Senate president, you know, former governors, and even expected that you know current governor should be there as well as you know. Uh, former president and vice president. However, a lot of them were not present. There's a narrative that's been put out that those who were not present are actually very loyal to the camp of Governor Wiki. I mean, we're talking about former president here, former Senate president, uh, and what have you. Do, do you think that this is actually true? I don't know the former president, the uh, former uh um senior president you're talking about i saw so, so we're talking about um i mean for a party as the pdp let's not forget that you had good luck jonathan you have olusha gonobasanjo of the pdp they're products of the pdp now olusha letters Gu were sent for this campaign to be kicked off i'm saying that there's a narrative that's out there that those who did not show up for the campaign we know that some governors didn't show up uh, week is part of, uh, you know, uh, the governors that didn't show up. And a lot of persons are saying that these are uh, those who are loyal to the aprons of the governor of week, uh, River State, including I mean, almost everybody. It, so I'm asking, do you think that this narrative is true? It is not true. Obasanjo is no longer a member of PDP. He, he tore his, um, uh, party, uh, his card, uh, I think, 2015 or thereabout. And he says he's no longer a member of any political party. Um, um, uh, former president, uh, good luck, Jonathan, has not been involved with PDP for so many years now. Uh, he has concentrated in his effort in uh, international politics and um, uh, observe, observing elections in so many countries as emissary of this government and rest of the world. You don't expect him to be there. He, he has never identified with PDP for a long time. Then uh, the, you're talking about former senior president, I'm, I'm asking which of them. Uh, Saraki was Saraki, there. Uh, yes. Pio Sayum, uh, uh, Let, let, let's not just narrow it to that narrative as far as possible. People will always be aggrieved. 
when the APC is going to do this, you'll be sure that so many other they are, they are key people might not also be there. But the, for me, me, that does not reduce what happened yesterday. And the PDP is doing the right thing by making sure that they are moving ahead. They cannot wait for everybody just for, uh, for them to, everybody to come for the, to the, um, to, uh, to the, there's going to be a campaign in all the 36 states of the Federation. If you did find some people in Rio to, yesterday, I'm sure they will find their way to the other states when this campaign begins. So, Bex, for me, they have done the right thing. And they are the first political party to do that. And we shouldn't take any way for that. Why some other parties are still struggling with uh, the problem of constituting their uh, presidential campaign committee, putting their ass together? PTP has moved ahead to start their campaign. And that, to me, that does not also foreclose all consultation and uh, attempt to be able to assuage all other members of the party who feel aggrieved for one reason or the other. But uh, from what I saw yesterday in New York, it was a it was a good show for the party, and I hope that they will take it up from there and also be able to re, um, uh, reconcile with other uh, people like the Wikis and other governors that we are not uh, at the venue yesterday. Yes, it's a big setback when you look at the fact that. Five governors from the party were not there. It's a very big setback. But also look at it from the point that if they didn't start off the campaign today or yesterday as they did, when would they do that? We have just barely about 120 something days to the election. And they have to move around the whole 36 states and their 50. All right, away from that, uh, ASU is promising to end strike after meeting with reps. And that's on the Daily Trust newspaper. As a matter of fact, uh, Falanor is also going to that. And Bajabi Amila saying, you know what, as a strike will just end in a matter of time. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, and uh, you know, we say in time with number that there must always come to a time where um, ASU just have to let go and um, call off the strike and continue in negotiation with the federal government. The universities cannot be closed down perpetually. And um, this, this strike has lingered for too long. When two elephants fight, it's the girls that suffer. The students have been at home for eight months. These are the students that the academic uh, session were disrupted by COVID. And another 11 months of strike before, before this. And some of them have lost have close to about two academic sessions. While ASU will continue to agitate for... Uh, for improvements uh, in facilities in the university, um, um, staff welfare, and the rest of them. It is also there is the need for us to be able to make sure that schools are open so that we don't have this long time of and And also, the government should be able to fulfill its own promises and the agreement it reached with us. And uh, they said they are already doing that. So the intervention by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Honorable Wajabi Amila, and uh, is, is, is really working out. But don't forget the fact that also, also have lost twice in the court. First was the industrial court, then also at the court of appeal. We had the court of appeal asked the members to return to work immediately. Why continue with his... Uh, litigation on the issues with the federal government. So ASO has no choice than to obey the court, even if they don't want to uh, return to the fact that a, a court of competent jurisdiction has given that order also is that they must return. But the question we are going to ask ourselves is that even if ASO is forced to return to classroom, will you be able to force them to teach? Will they be able to give their best as lecturers when they are teaching the students? So those are the issues that are there. But uh, to the disadvantage of us, you can see that government is trying to break their ranks by registering two other unions. So what we have now, instead of having just us in the universities, by the time they return, there are other unions now that will be competing for membership in, in the university. But let's see how that pans out. Will they be able to muster enough membership to be able to break the ranks of us? It's yet to be seen. No, but, but also, I'd also like to ask, you know, because I think this is a question that a lot of students have also been putting out. If you look at it, uh, we're already in October, so you have November and December. And so do you think that November, December would be enough for the students to meet up with a, a session, let's say a session? 
A university session doesn't run from January to December. No, I'm just saying for every... I mean, we're talking about semesters now. Uh, no. How many semesters... Uh, how many months make up a semester? So do you think that uh, November, December is enough for one semester? What you might just say they will do is having a, they have a crash program. Um, the students have to read more on their own. Syllabus have been given out. Um, uh, guidelines have been given out. They have to read up. A session runs from... Um, from I don't I think from September to about July or thereabout. Although unlike in our days, where we have a curriculum that's so that every university shut down at the same time. These days we don't even know when they are finishing, when they are starting, and the rest of them. But I think there will be some level of adjustment. But the fact is that the students will have to do a lot of work and a lot of catch up to do. Um, there are a lot of uh, those that are supposed to go for youth service the final year. I know that the, the, the last batch of NYC, the past, I don't know whether the new batch is in now. If they are in, that means they, have, they are losing that in that particular batch. They wait for the next batch. Then for those of them that read law and are supposed to graduate, I don't know. They definitely will not be able to meet up with the law school this year as it were. So they start, it may just have to be next year. Those in the medical school. So it's, it's a, a, a <laughs> sincerely, I don't know how they go to part it, but I know that the university... Uh, we'll be able to work at the modalities. I know one or two universities that have already given notice of resumption, whether ASO is resuming or not. I know that a, a university, one of the federal universities in Ohio State, Ocean State, or thereabouts, has given a notice of resuming on the 20th of this month, and some other ones are following suit. But uh, I, they'll be able to adjust that. But the students will have, have to do more. Does it have anything to do with the new union that, uh, that's been registered? No, I wouldn't think that it has to do with the. Don't forget that there was a directive by the uh, by the NUC some time ago that the university should resume. Uh, you remember that uh, uh, that circular, which they quickly withdrew within 24 hours. So I don't know whether there's a fresh um, directive from NUC or Federal Minister of Education for the universities to resume. Don't also forget we're not talking just about the federal university. It's both the state and federal university, some of the state universities and federal university, But I wouldn't think it has anything to do with the new union. Because if you're saying to the new union, what is their membership? I doubt if they have membership of up to 10% of the university so far. Well, um, quickly, let's talk about what's happening in Lokoja. Uh, you have the flood. Uh, petrol scarcity is spreading to states as gas price is also on the hike. There's a spike right here. We're also talking about the fire incident. There's a lot that's going on. Um, do, do you think that, you know, we're really paying attention? Because it feels like the entire country, we're moving on with politicking and no one seemed to be talking about what's happening, especially with the flooding. Yes, um, the flooding... In not only in local or Kogi State, but in most parts of the country, is a, a troublesome. Um, we have flooding in Anambra State, uh, so many villages have been submerged, so there are people killed. We had the same thing going on in, in, in Nasarawa, in Gombe, in Benue, and so many other states of the federation. Lagos State uh, also having a, a, a large chunk of flooding. It's not as devastating as what we have in local the same thing in Ogo State. But the problem for me is that this issue of flooding, especially within the North Central and local uh, places and the River Niger, uh, is becoming worrisome. It has become a yearly occurrence. And some of these are man made. It's not just the climate change. Time without number, Cameroon have always was Nigeria. Whenever it's going to release water from its dam, and they've asked Nigeria to do the need. We have not done our own part of the job. So whenever they release water from those dams, it gets the whole of the, the, the Niger River or the, the, the access of um, Kogi State fully flooded. They said when they, when they were building their own, that Nigeria should also find a solution so that when they uh, retaliate the water, so that when they release it, it can just bounce off without flooding. Because we have not done it. So that is the problem. And you see that most of these places get submerged on a daily basis. Basically, sometime about some few years back, I was coming back from um, Abuja to Lagos within this period, and I was stopped at Lokoja for two days because we couldn't drive past the, 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 the Lokoja because of our flooding. 
Now the federal um, the federal recipe is saying that people should take alternative route, Mokwa and the rest of them. Go to that road. That road is so bad. So being as much as we are blaming nature for some of these issues, but are we also doing what we are supposed to do to prevent it? Yes, we saw that it's a global thing, that's a global warming and project. You can see what happened in Florida a few days ago. We are about 100 lives we are lost. But you've seen that in the United States, they are doing the need for them, making sure that people are safer and making sure that um, infrastructure that were destroyed are uh, uh, rebuilt. What are we doing here? So, the, uh, the, both the state and federal government need to do the needful. And we have to look at the issues being raised by Cameroon. On a yearly basis, they release this water at this time. What are we doing to be able to prevent it from killing our people, flooding our homes, and destroying infrastructure? And the more worrisome part for me is that this is going to affect agriculture. Because, for example, there is a company that lost a hundred million dollars worth of rice plantation recently. The whole thing were wiped out within the, that uh, as it. What this is going to lose is that prices of of food stuff, which is already hitting the roof, by next day is going to increase because we'll not be able to harness and harvest as many uh, uh, products uh, as possible because they've been wiped out. In Yam, in the Benue State, um, rice in Kogi and other places, and that is going to cause a lot of problems for us next year. Well, uh, Chris, we have to go now. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning. We just uh, hope and pray, as always, in Nigeria that, uh, you know, those actors will get into action. And we're talking about stakeholders here and the government, everyone that should be involved would take uh, the necessary action uh, to ensure that we salvage the situation. Because it, you know, it doesn't, it you doesn't know we're look... A we pray more than other nations instead of doing what we are ought to be uh, doing. But it, we'll be so, so I'm saying that we're praying that the people will take action. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> I, we totally have to pray agree for I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. I say we we'll continue to pray, but let us put, I, let us put, let, let let us walk the talk. Rather than just sitting down and praying. Okay. Other nations that are even more fired are not. Don't just sit down and pray. Let us walk and pray. That is what I'm saying. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Uh, uh, Chris, thank you so much. I mean, Chris, we, we are praying that those who should do the work should do the work. I'm sure that if we can do the work, you and I will get into action. But that's the much that we can take. Uh, we appreciate your time. Chris K. Dewandu is Executive Director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. And uh, we look forward to sharing his thoughts next week. That's it. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first conversation right here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.